Hello again, everybody. Today I have a follow-up for a video I made quite a long time ago. I look back through the archive here. All the way back, 10 whole months ago, I have enabled touchpad swipe gestures in Linux. And I've gotten some feedback on this video, some questions about how this works. Is it still working? Is there a better way? And in the time since I made this video, I've actually come up with a better solution. So I had been using live input gestures, which is perfectly acceptable, except that if you read in the description itself, it says it's a small and simple utility only intended to be used temporarily until GNOME and other DEs use live input gestures natively. Now, as far as I'm aware, you can use these input gestures in Wayland. I don't use Wayland because I have an NVIDIA GPU. I believe there's some things that you can do to get it to work, but in any case, I'm still using X. And so something like this is necessary for me. Live input gestures was fine, but I found a better option that I think might be better for other people as well, mainly because it seems to be more than just a stopgap or you know to be used temporarily and also because it includes some additional capabilities with the speed and duration of which the swipes themselves work, which is something that, as far as I can tell, in live input gestures isn't available. So I already have it installed on this system. I'm actually going to demonstrate installing it on a virtual machine. So if I flip over here and take a look, I'm on just a fresh install of Ubuntu 20.04, and I'm on the Fusuma GitHub page. And it's a pretty simple installation procedure. So I'm just going to go ahead and open a terminal here and follow along with the instructions. First step is to add your user to the input group. And then they're saying you must reboot in order for this change to take place. When you add a user to a group, if that user currently has a session, the group membership doesn't take effect until the next time that user logs in. In my experience, you can just log out and log back in, but because they're saying must reboot in big bold letters, we'll, we'll probably reboot. Although I'm not going to show you Fusuma in the virtual machine itself, um, I'm going to show you on my hardware. So, okay, we've done that. The next step is to install Lib Input Tools. So we'll go ahead and do that. And this is what's actually allowing this to hook into the touchpad events. Ruby is how this is published. It's a Ruby gem. So we want to install Ruby. And then once that's installed, we want to install the gem itself. All right, and they have an optional installation here of XDO tool. Now, for me, it's not optional because most of my shortcuts are going to be keyboard shortcuts, and this is exactly what this is gonna allow us to do. So XDO tool is allowing you to send, allowing you to map the swipe gestures to keyboard shortcuts. And why that's important is if you, let's just say, look at the settings in GNOME here under keyboard shortcuts, all of the functionality in GNOME in terms of, you know, raising windows, switching desktops, resizing, tiling, you know, all the things that you probably want to do with swipe gestures are keyboard shortcuts. And so that's how I've mapped them in my configuration and the XDO tool is what's allowing that to happen. So for me, it's really not optional. So we'll go ahead and install that, oh, which I guess I already did, yep. And following down along here, touchpad not working in GNOME. I haven't had this issue where the touchpad's not working, but potentially you are having that issue. And if you are, then this G settings command will enable it for you. 
Also, you can go into settings under mouse and touchpad. Now, it's, there's no touchpad because this is a virtual machine, but if there was one here, you might see that it's disabled. That setting is essentially toggling that uh, to enabled. All right, so the usage is just to launch it is the command Fusuma at a terminal. To update, you do sudo gem update Fusuma. The next step would be customizing your gesture mapping. And so what we need to do here is create a directory and then a config file. So we're gonna make that directory. And they're saying to use nano, but I'm actually just gonna use gedit just to make it a little easier to see. All right. They give us a couple of different starting points. So the config file can be whatever you want it to be. And they have some other examples in their wiki here on GitHub. They give two examples to start with. The first one being if you're running elementary OS, you could use these shortcuts or this, this mapping to match more closely, I guess, to the elementary OS Pantheon desktop. The one I'm going to use is this gesture mapping for Ubuntu OS to mimic Mac a little. So if you're coming from Mac, this would be a I guess a familiar configuration for you for the touchpad. So I'm gonna copy this, paste it in, and the only word of warning I'll give you is that a YAML file relies heavily on this spacing to be just so. So if this was one space off in this indentation, it wouldn't process this file properly. So just make sure when you're copying this that you get a clean copy and everything is indented properly if it isn't, you probably will have issues. All right, so I'm using this as a, as a starting point. Maybe I want to change things in here. How do I go about doing that? Well, actually, first let's look at the wiki itself. And in here you'll see, so we saw elementary OS. There's a mapping for i3, KDE to mimic Mac OS, Pop OS with Cinnamon, Pop OS default GNOME, and Ubuntu. So we have other mappings in here as well, or other configuration files. But the commonality between them, and this is pretty easy to follow, I think. You're saying, what's the gesture? So there's a swipe and a pinch. And these are the top level gestures. And then what type of swipe? A three finger or a four finger? And then which direction? And then what do you do when that swipe is input? And in this case, it's going to be alt shift tab to the left, three fingers to the left, three fingers to the right would be alt tab. And so I think this is pretty self-explanatory in terms of how you would map this out. What I'll say is that the keys are not always straightforward. So you might think that the exact key name is what you'd put in here, but what you'll want to look at is down a little further, XDO tool, there's a manual for it, and there's also a available keys hint. So this is handy for if you're trying to figure out which specific key and how those map out, because they sometimes are named a little bit differently than what you might expect. And so if you put something in here and it didn't work, that might be why. So come out and check this documentation. I mentioned earlier one of the things that differentiated this approach to live input gestures. And the threshold and interval are the two, to me, that I think make the biggest difference. And what these essentially do is the sensitivity and the delay between the actions. So the sensitivity would relate to how quickly that length of the swipe would need to be. So by default, it's at one. And if you find that you have to swipe too far with three fingers, four fingers, whatever, and you expect that event to fire more quickly, then you can set that threshold to be less. Now they're saying here that 0.5 will shorten the swipe length by half. So if you expect that swipe to happen sooner, then you can shorten these. The interval is the time between gestures. So let's say you're pinching to zoom in and out, and you let go and you start pinching again. How much time should pass between it recognizing it as a new gesture. I personally haven't had to adjust these, 
but I did play around with them and you absolutely can fine tune this. So if you just aren't getting the type of response you expect, this is exactly how you can set that. And you see here at the bottom, it gives you an option for swiping and pinching for the threshold and the interval. When you run this, there's some, some flags here and you can do some different things by passing these flags when you launch Fusuma or, or you know, run it from the uh, terminal. And a couple of the interesting ones to me are the C to configure an alternate config file. And what might be useful here is let's say you have a set of gestures that makes sense for browsing the web and general desktop use. That could be one configuration file, but then you want swipe gestures for a specific application. Maybe you're using a photo editor, you know, graphics software, video editor, some sort of software that has a lot of different types of inputs that you could make. You could have an alternate configuration file. And when you start Fusuma, you can pass it this flag with the path to that file and then have it map to those commands for that specific purpose. I haven't done this yet, but it seems like it would be something useful if you have a situation like that. So it's really nice that they have that as an option in here. The other important one is the daemon or, or dash D. So if you were to run Fusuma, actually I gotta close on here to get my terminal back. If you were to just run it, it stays in the foreground. So this terminal is now captive, if you will, and Fusuma will only continue to run as long as this terminal is open. So if I were to close the terminal or control C to get out of this command, Fusuma is no longer running. So that's why I wanna pass the dash D flag to run as a daemon in the background. So now I still have the terminal and Fusuma is running in the background and will continue to run until I kill it. So a couple more things on this page. There are some plugins which are interesting depending on your situation and how you might use this. There's a send key, a window manager control, and a key press. And I'll let you investigate the first two, but the third one I think is very interesting because it allows you to use a key press as a modifier to a gesture. So I just mentioned that option of multiple configuration files, right? Well, maybe you don't wanna stop Fusuma every time and load a different configuration file if you're jumping back and forth. And what you'd really like to do is to be able to have that swipe gesture behave differently depending on a key press. So you can hold a modifier key, like let's say the control key, and use three fingers to swipe left or right. Holding that control key is mapped now to a different outcome for that swipe. That makes, that was probably the clumsiest possible way to say that. But I think you understand what I mean. So it's, it's a, the modifier key and you could use, we just take a look here. You can use all of these keys as modifiers for a three finger swipe left. You could have nine different potential mappings for that, depending on, because there'd be one without a modifier and then eight modifier keys. Yeah, that's probably overkill. I don't, I don't know that anyone's actually going to do that. But it is nice to know that if, let's say, I have left control as my modifier, if I hold that and swipe, then I get a different outcome than just doing the swipe without it. This is why I think this is just, it seems like a much more powerful option than live input gestures. And that's not to take anything away from live input gestures. I used it successfully for quite a while, and I think it's still a good solution for a lot of people. This just sort of takes a different path of being a full featured gesture system, if you will. The last thing I want to mention here is the become a patron and support. Touchpad support in Linux seems to be one of those things that is not done as well, I guess, as other operating systems. And I would guess particularly Macs with MacBook Pros and how people use the touchpads on those to great success. So if this project meets that need for you and has made it so that you can use your laptop in a way that you couldn't before, then consider supporting. Certainly if you're enjoying using it and you are getting benefit from it and you want to see it continue, then consider becoming a patron or contributing in, a, in another way. So they're saying you can contribute time, expertise, and also your money. Just something that I like to mention, free isn't free. <laughs> 
open source takes time and effort. And obviously the person behind this has put in a lot of time and effort. Okay, let's take a look at what I've got going on here. So if I go to config Visuma and look at my config file. Now you notice that I have different mappings than what are in the default uh, that I had used in the example. And the reason for that is what I wanted to, what I expect to happen when I'm swiping with three fingers left and right is I want the browser to go back and forward. That's what I'm looking to do. And then for up and down three fingers, I want to change desktops. For four finger left and right, I want to be able to move the split screen windows left and right. Tell you what, let me just show you. So I actually didn't have this running before, but let me take a look now. All right, so if I swipe four fingers right, tiles half screen to the right, the application four fingers left moves it over. Four fingers left again, we'll bring it back. Four fingers up, maximize. Four fingers down, back to the normal state. So that gives me some window control. And if I were to just take a look here at back and forth, if I click on this and go to a different page, now three fingers left takes me back, three fingers right takes me forward. And for my pinch, I have it set to the zoom on the page, so I can pinch in and out to zoom a page. And so that's what I have set up. It's obviously very boring and straightforward, but most of the time I'm just using an external mouse anyway. So I'm sure that if I were using the touchpad on a more regular basis that I would probably have a more extensive set here. But this is what works for me and hopefully is something that will work for you as well. So with that, I think I'm all done with this topic, and I hope it's something that you get use out of. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you really liked it, please consider subscribing. If you didn't like it, thumbs down, but please tell me why. I'd like to know. And with that, I'm going to say have a great day, take care, and I will see you soon in another video.